The final topic to cover with uh, class diagrams in, in UML is this uh, idea of inheritance. Now, you won't be tested on this, but it is very, very useful to know. And because we've discussed inheritance before in terms of the use case diagrams, um, I thought it was relevant to discuss here, even though I won't assess you on it. So here's another example. Uh, it describes an auction site with buyers and sellers. Um, we could use that to create a uh, class diagram like you can see in front of you with these associations, these attributes and these behaviours of these different classes. But what we can immediately see from this is that there's a lot of commonality. We notice that the user, the seller and the buyer all require a bunch of similar um, similar attributes even though they have different behaviours. And the question then is do we need all three of those classes? Well, yes and no. Let's take a look at a different way of doing this. What we can do instead is we can get one class to inherit properties from another. So I've created a new user class, which actually has all the properties and behavior, all the attributes and behavior of both the buyer and user class mixed into one. Why? Because um, sellers and buyers are both users uh, and both sellers and buyers can buy things so I would say that buying action that activity is part of the user class rather than requiring its own separate class um, then you note that only sellers can post items and only sellers need an authenticated address and that unique behavior is what signifies sellers are a special kind of user. We're going to create them as a subclass and we do that using this little arrow up here and all that means is that the seller object from the end without the arrow inherits all of the properties of the other class and then extends them with some additional attributes and some additional behavior some additional methods so our seller can do everything a user can do but also has a specific address and also has access to this post behavior and may also have a bunch of other associations and of course we have the other association there with the seller class relating it to items for sale uh, in Java, you can implement this in a few ways, but by far the most common is to use this extends idea on a basic class. So here's a very, very short and dirty description of that user class with the key, um, with the key attributes and then some key methods. And then all we do is we public class seller extends user. This says that um, the seller class will be able to have access to everything that the user class does. Um, it will have to use getters and setters because I've set all these as privates and then also gains this additional functionality of having um, an address and uh, having this post method functionality as well. So just be clear, really clear what we're saying there is that um, this inheritance says that B, what, what is, um, what is gaining the inheritance is a subcategory of that broader thing. So a seller is a subcategory of uh, user. User is the super, uh, super category in this example. All the properties of user are there automatically propers of seller. Any associations of user also apply to seller and importantly anywhere in the system where you use a user object you must also be able to use a seller object because they should have all the same behavior it's just that the seller has a little bit more than A. Now Interestingly, you can also have multiple subclasses. You don't just have to have one. So for items, it would make a lot of sense to have some subclasses, a property subclass, a car subclass, a household, where you've got similar kinds of items that require specific behavior. You can get them all to inherit uh, some basic item properties, but then branch out into their own unique, um, unique classes. However, it's often tricky to decide when to use inheritance and when to use associations. This is complex, you'll see this a lot more in the coming years. But some useful checks is that if you have a superclass A and a subclass B, you never want to use inheritance if you'll need to transmute B to being a different object in some other class. Uh, we'll see an example of this in a moment. Um, also, that that inheritor should extend and not 
replace or delete any behavior of what it's inheriting from and that 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 super class shouldn't just be a utility class it should have a bunch of useful functionality that you want to reuse again and again and again throughout multiple different inheritors if you look through those and any of those checks fail it's usually saying that associations rather than inheritance would be a more robust way of implementing this so let me give you an example here is the same relationship implemented two different ways in the example on the left we have a person superclass and then two subclasses employee and customer and they both inherit all the behavior and attributes from person over here we have a person and it's associated with an employee and a customer which one is preferable um, I think in many cases you would look at the left hand one and go well that seems to make sense a employee is a subclass of person and a customer is a subclass of person but actually in actuality at the right hand side implementation is better why because if someone needed to be both an employee and a customer you would have to create another class that was both employee and customer because the inheritance is wrong however on the right hand side someone can be both an employee and a customer at the same time um, it doesn't require us to have two distinct objects it means we don't have to duplicate the information and we don't end up having this risk of data integrity problems so like i said this idea of when to and when not to use inheritance is a rabbit hole. I'm going to leave it there, but it is an interesting topic. And now you see how you can use inheritance in class diagrams and how to implement them in Java.